This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Suffering. We all suffer. Some more than others. A lot more than others. Like my friend here, Stuart Little. He has gone through so much. He's a tiny little mouse just trying to live life with his drip. I mean, look at him. He's a, he looks incredible. Man knows how to dress. He may be small, but he got big style. But anyways, like I was saying, Stuart Little suffers. And he has suffered. No one in life has suffered more than Stuart Little. Not the Joker, not Guts from Berserk, not even Subaru from ReZero. Stuart Little has gone through hell, and his life needs to be extinguished. I'm sorry to say this, but out of the decency of my heart, I want to step on Stuart Little, so this man's poor cycle of torment will end. I don't want this man to hurt any longer. It pains me. I mean, just think of his rodent counterparts who live better lives than him. Jerry Mouse, he's living a good life. He's smart, and he's always just vibing out. Remy the Rat, he's literally a five-star chef in a luxury life. Mickey Mouse, don't even get me started on that man. But Stuart, he lives a sad life. And I think collectively, if we all see Stuart Little somewhere in the streets, we should do him a favor and step on him. Just a just quick little plop, you know? Just, just, you know, just do it, okay? For legal reasons, this is not a call for some widespread carnage against all rodents. No, no, no. Just Stuart. Just, just this guy. You see, Stuart Little got his start in a creepy book where he wasn't actually a mouse, but a human mouse looking freak. And then he got a documentary about his life three times over. His life is so interesting, he had a franchise, with what looks like him being on the run and homeless again in the forest in the third documentary. Jeez, poor guy. <laughs> Not even a happy ending, man. But the first movie is from 1999, and honestly, it's really good. I've watched this movie over and over again as a kid, but I'm realizing just now how actually good it is. It has the same director as Lion King, it stars Hugh Laurie House himself, and this kid. And even M. Night Shyamalan himself wrote the screenplay. Yes, that M. Night wrote Stuart freaking Little. No wonder Stuart suffers so much in this movie. M. Night, of course, brings torment into every project. Stuart Little is voiced by Michael J. Fox. Really guys, you had a, you had a fox voice a mouse? Come on, that's messed up. But honestly, everyone in here is great in this movie. I'd say it's genuinely what Paddington is now in almost every form, but Paddington definitely lives a happier life even when in jail for murder. I want to dive into Stuart's traumatic life together. We're gonna see how hard this man struggles and how he's even still kicking. But first, it's sponsor time, baby. Like most people, sleep is really important to me. So I was super excited when Helix Sleep approached me for this video. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are shipped directly to your door. Like this one that I got in this box. A whole California King mattress fit inside this box. Isn't isn't that crazy? What, like how? All I had to do was unwrap it and let it inflate and boom, insanely comfy bed right there on my floor. I mean, excuse me, I don't, I don't have any other furniture yet. Honestly, the best part about Helix Sleep is the way it delivers right to your door with free shipping. Especially in my case, moving the box right into my bedroom, it was so easy to unbox and unwrap. The first couple nights sleeping on it especially, I would fall asleep almost instantly. It's almost dangerous how comfy it is, you know what I mean? Now most nights I like to lay on my side and watch YouTube until I fall asleep, and the mattress is just so comfy to do that. It just, it just feels so cozy and nice. Helix offers a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type to help you find the perfect mattress for you. I'm a side sleeper, and my girlfriend is a stomach sleeper, and you can select what kind of firmness you want. We both wanted a medium kind of feel firmness, not too soft, not too firm. So medium was perfect for both of us. You also put how often you wake up with back pain. I usually get back pain pretty often, so that's what I put. What Kylie put sometimes, and I think it's a really good thing to put into the quiz which matched us with the Helix Plus. Since I moved into a new house about a week ago, sleeping on this mattress each night has been the best part. Like honestly, besides just being sponsored, I'm really glad to have this kind of mattress. It just feels really good. Look, even even my cat Winston likes it, don't you Winston? Look, look, look at him, he's so cute. I mean, weirdly enough, the cat's actually been sleeping in our room a lot more now that we have this bed. He's never done that before. He, he never really sleeps in our bed, but now he does pretty much every single night, which I, I, I honestly think is cute. So if you're looking for a great new bed, you can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash frames to get up to $200 off your Helix mattress and free pillows. Look at these nice pillows, man. They're fluffy. That's helixsleep.com slash frames or click the link in the description. 
So the movie begins with the big brother kid. He's excited that his parents are going to adopt someone today. He's gonna have a brother, he's gonna have a brother, whoa! Little does he know that they're going to adopt not a brother, but a damaged soul. There's a lot of funny stuff here about how the brother wants a little brother, not a big brother. <laughs> Don't worry that you're gonna get a little brother. He's, he's, he's a tiny man. And immediately you'll see how wonderful the set design is here. Like the adoption office with the parents being so small in this massively tall room. It's like a weird nice touch right from the beginning. We then meet Stuart reading Little Women. <laughs> Nice. Stuart kind of just inserts himself into conversation about adoption with the parents. We already see how sad Stuart is. He suggests other kids be adopted before him. He doesn't even have confidence in himself. But the parents adopt him anyways, and we get like a cute 90s intro song where they type up the adoption papers. Ooh, it's so vibey. We see how the parents' house is this adorable home in New York in the middle of two massive skyscrapers. I love it. It's, that's iconic. Stuart goes inside the colorful house. I mean, it's so Oh, nice dude, I wanna live here. Stuart's having a good time in this new home until he's eaten. He, he, he's, in a split second, the cat devours him without hesitation. And not even a moment later, not even, not even a moment later, before he's even dry from the saliva of the cat, the big brother comes home, looks at him, and instantly shows his disappointment. His first impression of him is that I hate you. That That's it. He doesn't even give him a sliver of chance for family love. No, he looks at him with a cold stare and goes into his little mouse hole in the wall. Speaking of, by the way, that's it's so random and cute. I, I want a little mouse hole in my house, what the hell? They popped off so hard for the set design in this movie for, for no reason. But then we see at least that the mom and dad love Stuart. They tuck him in bed and he's all happy until the cat comes in, threatening him, saying how he'll always be a looming cloud in the home he lives in. The next morning, the big brother suffocates George, throws him down a dark abyss, leading for the mom to accidentally almost drown him in the washing machine. Oh, good morning, Stuart, man. Wow. His life is almost extinct but sadly saved at the last moment. But it turns out he might be poisoned by all the soap he consumed. Oh, what fun. Stuart has, has freaking chemical poisoning right now, man. Stuart, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stuart does get one moment of happiness when the big whole family comes over and gives him gifts. They give him a lot of gifts. He talks about in the orphanage, he's dreamed of this kind of stuff, like a fairy tale. And then he says fairy tales are real because he has a happy family. Oh, Stuart. Oh, Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. Fairy tales for you need an ending. That's what I'm gonna say. Soon, the big brother is given a ball to play with, with Stuart. And the big brother's like, nah, what, what, what do you think I'm gonna do with this? What do you think I'm gonna do with this ball? We, we, what are we gonna do? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna squish him with this. He's like, this guy's short, he's a loser. Soon, Stuart tries to hang out with the brother and his train and his red car. And the brother ties him to train tracks to see that little body squirm and struggle. This kid is sick, man. He's, he's, he's demented. Stuart ends up escaping and sadly living. Stuart then gets in a small boat race and crashes all the boats, and once again nearly drowns. But they win the boat race, which leads to another small moment of sunshine for Stuart, only to be met with more pain. Pain. Pain of his abandoning parents showing up at the door. Now that Stuart is all a big shot for one second, these bozos thought they could just show up and take him and his newfound fortune. They convince the parents to let them take Stuart away into a dark, gross castle. From a cozy bed to a cold, gross rock. Man, Stuart gets nothing good, not even for a moment. It turns out that these aren't actually Stuart's parents. They are actually holding him here until the cats come eat him. This leads Stuart to get chased all over the city, running for his life. He lives like John Wick. He can't stop. Everyone's out to kill him always. Everywhere he goes, everywhere he hides, they're watching, waiting to pounce on Stuart. Eventually, this one cat wants to do it. He wants to eat Stuart, but the family cat saves him. He stops him from being eaten. Why would he do that? This leads for a somewhat happy ending for Stuart when he's back with the family and he can live out his days here. But can he? Can he live out his days here? He has two more movies where he's most likely going through the same exact struggles. Even when in the third movie, he becomes animated in a disgusting way. Wait, seriously, look at this. What the hell? Stuart, Stuart, man, are you okay? You're looking a little weird now. Oh my God, what the heck? <laughs> what happened? Oh, Stuart, you're living in a hell dimension, aren't you? Stuart Little lives a life of sadness and struggle. Sure, his movie is great. It's actually really sweet, but 
his life isn't. The movie, though, is filled with so much color, so much cute music and performances, with set design that is absolutely wholesome. I love how when we first meet Stuart, we see how truly tall the parents are from Stuart's perspective. I also love that Stuart's little mini scale makes everything feel so much more massive, like when he goes up to the sink and he has this big old toothbrush. Oh, it's, it's nice, it's just a cute little detail. Or like in the lake scene where it feels like an actual ocean. It's awesome, they do it all really well. I honestly did not expect to genuinely be so into this movie at this age, but it made me feel all warm inside. My only gripe is, Stuart should no longer be warm. He should be a cold, lifeless body. Guys, I know that sounds brutal, but it's for his own good, okay? I love Stuart. Seeing his life throughout has made me sympathize with him. I just simply don't want him to hurt anymore because I honestly feel like his life is cursed. I feel like it's destined for him to always to have four bad things happen to him for every one good thing. And you could see it in his face. You could see the sadness of its existence get to him. We all have a good compared to Stuart. Compared to Stuart Little, we all live a life of luxury. And this poor mouse should not have to bear with it any longer. Which is why I propose that we all get hand in hand and step on him. We should all step on Stuart Little together as a society, as a gift from humanity. Stuart Little, count your days.